Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I am going to answer another question that was sent in by you or someone else who was watching this video or one of my videos. Allergies are kicked up into high gear and I'm trying not to sneeze. So we'll see if I could get through this without a sneeze. Now this question here, this is from the same person who's name i'm i i don't think i'm supposed to say i think this is a anonymous question here i answered one of the questions in the newest episode of the podcast which i believe is episode 31 i think and i thought i would do another one here let me just read the fucking question and i'm going to read it as it's written if anything, I write free verse on paper that is significant or important to my self-expression or just myself in general is, as you say, a fucking poem. If I write it to be a poem, but I write it without any structure, form, meter, or any fucking conscious thought or message or reason, which is basically what I do, I feel the passion, drive, craving, and need to write. Like I'm slicing my veins and spilling the gravy shit all over the page. Have you ever done that? Like in a notebook or something? Not for public or another human consumption? Well, say you have, but then wish to share it in a chat book or anywhere in public. Do you need to tidy it up some? So this is a super cool question that has a couple different... Um, beats here that I want to get into. So first off, um, I just want to congratulate you on knowing your need and craving to write. And that when you write, it's like slashing yourself open and just bleeding out on the page. Like that is so fucking important. That is how you do it. It's like, um, in one of the blood rags here. I'm going to try to read it like this. Um, I have a poem called Blood is Blood. And it says, Slice your throat and bleed out. Get a paper cut and drip a drop. Blood is blood. The size of the wound isn't the poetry. It's the bleeding. And that is like fucking like mantra shit. Like, that is how I fucking do anything creative. It's like, no matter what the size of the wound is, you could be writing about something fucking horribly insignificant. But if you're bleeding, if it cuts you at all, that blood, that's the fucking poetry. It's, it's, that's the art. It's not the size of the wound. Okay? So... Right off the bat, that's I any chance I can get to talk about that, I'll talk about that. As you say here, when you're writing your free verse on paper and it's just for you, when you say, like, as you say, a fucking poem um, without any structure, form, meter or any conscious thought, that is a poem. And I think you I think, you know, that I just want to make it clear to everybody else who's watching this, like Free verse is called free verse because you don't have to follow the form. You don't have to follow any structure or meter or have any fucking conscious thought about anything. It's just writing. And the whole thing with out conscious thought, that stream of conscious, um, there's motherfuckers who write novels like that that just fucking go on and on forever, which is cool. Some of them are great. Some of them are garbage. But, you know, every book has its audience. Am I right? So do I ever do this? Yes, I do write for me, but not always just for me. I don't know if I answered this in the email that I sent back to you, but there are a lot of poems I have that are kind of locked away right now. And it's not because I don't want them to ever come out. And it's not because I don't think they're ready and I'm going to eventually go rewrite them and revise and do all the shit. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with, I don't want certain people to get hurt by reading certain things. And 
because so much of the stuff I write is about like personal experiences and stuff like that, I have a tendency to hurt people who are close to me by some of the things that I say. So because of that, when I'm writing something that I that I have to write to fucking get it out of me, to get like the hurt and the pain and the shit out. But if I know that someone will read this and know immediately that it's about them, I'll, I'll push those off to the side. And maybe in a year or two or five, I'll put those out. You know what I'm saying? But hopefully enough time will have passed that maybe it's about them, maybe it's not. You know, like it could be like a question or maybe like, I don't know, fuck, motherfuckers die and I don't have to fucking worry about hurting anybody's feelings anymore, you know? Other things, too, like, especially with family. I guess the lucky thing I have is that my family does not read my stuff, which is great. Because if they did, Thanksgiving would be awkward. A lot of people say, I don't know if a lot of people say this, but I've heard this said. That if you can't put your work out there without fear of what your family and people are going to think, then you're not ready. I've heard this, okay? There is truth to that. But where I see the difference is it's not that I'm not putting it out because I'm afraid of what they're going to think of me. I'm not putting it out because I don't want to hurt them, if that makes sense. So I have like a stack of fucking poems that are like, I don't know, like the fucking murder list. You know, like if anybody reads these, a lot of people are going to be hurt. And God, this was forever ago, but I think it's in Fingering the Mundane. But I had a couple poems about this um, person, or maybe it's in one of the Type Hard books. I can't remember. But I had some poems about this person, and they got really mad about it and told me that I was never allowed to write about them again and um, that I do not have permission to write about my experiences with them. So I immediately just copy and pasted um, this person's nasty ass fucking text message um, into my fucking Scrivener and turned that into a poem. And at the end of the day, you know, it's like, I'm a fucking poet. Whatever you say, canon will be used in my next fucking poem. So watch your fucking mouth. None of this is what you have asked, though. So let me get back to this. Like, when you say in your question, like you say, uh, have you ever done that? Like in a notebook or something, not for public or another human consumption. My question to you would be, what exactly are you talking about here? Like, are you saying that these poems aren't ready for public consumption or that you don't? you're afraid to let people see them. Because if you're afraid to let people see them, that's a different thing to wrestle with than if you don't think they're ready for public consumption. Because if it's you don't think they're ready for public consumption, I think they probably are. And this is where me and a lot of other poets get into it. Because I feel like revisions... I feel like what revision does is take your, like, base emotion and kind of clutters it up and, like, cleans all the dirt off of it to where it becomes something that is basically like anything else anyone else writes. So I'm not a big fan of that. But if you don't want to share it because you're afraid of that, then that's the thing that you need to deal with and figure out, like... Like, am I afraid of people reading my stuff? Or do I just not think the poem's ready? Because the poem's ready. Like, you wrote it, it's ready. But if you're afraid, you gotta think about why you're afraid. Are you afraid of what people are gonna think? Are you afraid of judgment? Are you afraid of people saying um, you're not very good? Are you afraid? Or, like, it could be something as different as, uh, like, you being afraid of what, like, your loved ones will think of you. Like, that they'll go, oh, you're thinking thoughts like that? Like, is that what it is? Like, just, like, try to figure out, like, the root cause of why you think a poem's not ready. Um, 
But then, let's say we get through all of this and to get to the end of your question here, um, and, and you want to share it in a chat book, do you tidy it up some? Most of all tidying up I do is I get rid of words that I don't think are necessary. Whenever I see the word and in my poem, I try to get rid of it. I usually try to get rid of the um, I, things like that, that just are words that just, I can't remember what they're called, conjoiners, or uh, it's probably not right. So, like, that's about as much cleaning up as I do. I just, like, take out words that aren't important. You know, I don't worry about really what it looks like on the page. <clears throat> there are some times when... If I'm just like typing, um, especially if I'm on my phone, I don't um, break up um, stanzas or anything like that. I just type, 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 type. So I might go through and anywhere where I feel like there would be a natural break, I'll add that. But that's that's about all the tidying I do. Like, um, I don't think too much about it. Um, I try not to get too precious about it. Like I say a lot, the art is in the making. Um, not in the editing. So the art comes when you initially harness that emotion and put it on the paper. And then everything else you do after that is kind of just um, doing what you do to it because you're afraid of what people are going to think about it. And then people who argue that with me and go, well, well you want to put good work out there. Well, just do good work the first time. What the fuck? Why make it super fucking hard for yourself? If you're going to be great, be great all the fucking time. Not just when you fucking feel like it. I don't know. So, person whose name I'm not going to say. Oh, shit. I almost knocked the whole fucking desk over right there. Anyway, I hope this answered your question. And I felt like there were more questions you had. So, please, please, please send me more questions. Let me know how I can help you, okay? So, um, promo code... BLKFRI20 to get 20% off select chapbooks um, like tonight. Mart is on sale for only $5 this month. Join Chapbook of the Month Club and it gives you all my chapbooks and everything I make all month. Plus, you get all the Poetic Anarchy videos so you can join Anarchy Crew by doing it. Okay? So, keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. Send me your questions to IHateMountWallGmail.com and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.